Good evening. Good evening. Good to see y'all tonight. Uh, Sam and Kim are in Fargo, North Dakota. They're with uh, Hannah. They've been with her since Saturday. Pray for them. They'll fly back Friday. So, but they'll be back with us on Sunday. And Matt and Kyle couldn't lead worship. Janice has got a little cold, so she can't. So I'm going to lead it tonight. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. This is how. Yeah, you don't want to hear me sing. Amen. But I know how to lead worship. I know how to give them a song, to sing, a video, and we'll sing along with the video. That's, that's how I used to do student service here. We're going to sing with, uh, uh, you know, Phil Wickham or, you know, Matt, whatever, Tomlin or whoever it is, I know who, I, I know who to pick. I can pick them, but, uh, but tonight we are going to, uh, you'll, you may have heard the song, but really good song, Thank You for the Blood Applied, and uh, I think that's a very good song, and so let's just uh, open up in prayer, and then Kelly will play the video, you can sing along with it, hey, you may never heard the song, that's fine, read the words, okay, they'll, they'll speak to you, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, come to you. We're grateful for just another beautiful day. You've given us to experience life and your grace and your mercy. And great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Your mercies are new every morning. You're so good to us and you're always good. We thank you for your kindness that reached down and saved us from the depths of our sin and hell and gave us eternal life. Now you've bestowed your love upon us and we can't be thankful enough. So Lord, we just ask that you'd meet with us. Pray your, your blood would cover everything in this building, everything that we say and do tonight. And so Lord, just... Um, Meet with each person tonight, in-house, online, and may you receive the glory, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, she's going to play this video, and you can sing along with them.
Some powerful words there. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, what it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you saved my life. Brought me from what? The darkness into the glorious light. There's nothing stronger. Oh, the wonder-working power of the blood. There's power in the blood. As Colossians 1, 13 and 14 says, He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. In Him we have what? Redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins. Now, some people don't want to mention the name blood, and this is not even a sermon. This is Lanyat. This is, uh, but praise the Lord. Through his shed blood, we have forgiveness of sins for salvation, but it's through his blood that we have forgiveness of sins every day when we confess and go to the Lord every day. And so, you may have not heard that song. It's a fairly new song out. Uh, I heard a church do it in invitation. It was just powerful words, uh, I thought just to remind us what Jesus has done for us. And so we're back in the series. We've been kind of going through the Sermon on the Mount through Sunday morning and sometimes on Wednesday. Uh, And tonight I want to talk to you about secret disciplines. Secret disciplines. Now Jesus taught his disciples uh, how to conduct themselves, how to to live, how to conduct themselves discreetly, how to, you know, to live properly. Uh, he spent three years pouring into them, showing them how to live this Christ-like life. And in this section, uh, he talks to us about what I want to call secret disciplines. Now, when you see the text, you'll know what they are. And the reason I call, call them secret disciplines, you should be able to pick up after you see the text. Um, But he talks to us about some spiritual disciplines that we all need to have in our lives. And so uh, tonight I just want to kick off. We're going to be in verses, well, we're going to be Matthew 6, 1 through 18. We're not going to cover the Lord's Prayer because we just came through that. Uh, But the section before that really ties in because he talks about three disciplines right here. uh, One, two, three that we need to have all in our lives. And so let's read Matthew Chapter 6, we're just going to read the first four verses. We'll get to the next later on. He says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor, don't sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be applauded by people. Truly I tell you, they have their reward. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand and know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And so tonight, I just want to have this a target of what we want to kind of talk about these three disciplines is this. Christ followers are not to draw attention to their private spiritual disciplines. We're not to be drawing attention to our private spiritual disciplines. Yes, as we look at these spiritual disciplines, God may speak to you and you share that with it, but you're sharing because you're wanting to encourage someone. It's not about what we just say, saw in that I want to be seen. Okay, so don't take me the wrong way that we shouldn't ever share anything. But out of the text, as we dive off in here, you'll, you'll see what Jesus is getting at uh, and what he wants us to have in our lives is not to be drawing attention. He wants us to have these private disciplines but not so we can draw attention to ourselves but that christ might get our attention and so i want to look at these three disciplines tonight give you a couple uh thoughts of application number one you give to god in his kingdom causes because he's commanded us to give you give to god 
and his kingdom calls us because he's already commanded us to give. Now, here he says uh, in, in verse 1, he's talking about, he says, hey, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. Now, that word, your righteousness, can be also translated charitable giving. And so God has called us to give the church. He's called us to give faithfully to the church, to bring the tithe in the storehouse, but he's also called us to give the kingdom causes too. And so what would that be? Well, you just... As a church, you pulled your money together, and this gave this, and this gave this, and we sent forty-four hundred dollars uh, to uh, the people in the Ukraine. Those church planters, the missionaries, uh, are they poor right now? Yeah, they <laughs> they had to leave their houses. Most of them had to leave their churches with basically maybe the clothes on their back and maybe a couple other changes of clothes, if that. So. God is saying, hey, yes, we need to give. But what he's saying here, he's saying, hey, he, he, he says, when you give, just don't go around sounding a trumpet. Now, is a trumpet a quiet instrument? No, you blow that trumpet, you're going to get somebody's, you're going to get people's attention when you blow a trumpet. And it's meant to draw attention. Now, before we throw these Pharisees and these religious people under the bus, uh, many people in our own county, in our own state, in our own nation, in churches, blow their own trumpets. They may not come out with their own trumpet, but they'll blow their trumpet so they can impress people by what they give. I've heard it a bunch in the church. People, will, they'll even blow it in front of me. 30 plus years of ministry. And what did text say? You got no reward, right? You know, if you want a reward, you just got it from, from man. You, you got no reward there uh, from, uh, from me. And so what Jesus is saying is for us, we've got to be careful not to blow our trumpet and say, hey, look what I've done, or, or man, because I gave so much, I want my name on that wall, or I want my name on this building, or I want everybody to know how much I gave to the building fund, or whatever else. And I think Jesus says, uh, this is a secret discipline. You know, you, you, you're, what does it say? You, your right hand's not even supposed to know what your left hand's doing. So, so what does that mean? That means we're, we're just to be giving as we're led by the Spirit, but not concerned about what people think or what people know. The Talmud says this, the Jewish Talmud says this, praises a man who gives charity and money in secret. Listen to what it says. It says, a man who gives charity in secret is greater than Moses, our teacher. Now, you need to get that. From a Jew, Moses, <laughs> outside of Father Abraham, he is the man. Why? He led them out of Egypt, as we've been reading, and he gave them, what, the Torah. First five books of the Bible. And so, it says, if you give, and you give in secret, You're greater than Moses. I thought, wow, I, I'd never heard that. I was like, wow, that's, a, that's powerful. And what they're saying is giving in secret and giving as God leads you and giving as the Spirit leads you will give God all the glory. And God will use it for his kingdom. But then it says what? And your father, where? In secret. Will reward you. And so that's why I call this secret disciplines is, yes, are we to be faithful to give? Yes. Do I know what you give? No. It's between you and God. Will I urge you and motivate you and challenge you to give? Yeah, because that's my, what God's called me to do. 
but if you've listened many times, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, especially something like Ukraine or something, I'll say, hey, you just pray. Seek God and seek what number he gives you. Because many times I think in those instances, God will say, hey, I want you to give blah, blah, blah. And it's not about him giving you numbers so you can tell others. It's about, okay, God, that's you know, what you're saying. All right, I'm going to be obedient and do it. And then God says, all right, now, you know, I will reward you for that. But if you just want to blow a trumpet and, and be known for what you give, or, Pastor, I'll give $500,000 to the building fund, get it, what? It, that's not what it's about. Praise God for many people that are just opposite that in churches. I've heard time and time again of where people don't even know or maybe the only person knew is who they dropped off the check to. They anonymously gave. I've known people to anonymously give to church. My first church, I had someone anonymously give so we could... We were trying to get a... a we had a old upright piano and we needed something nice and we were raising fun and somebody didn't even go to our church handing my music minister $4,100 bills and what did we owe? $4,400. So God can provide. I know another church they were $1.3 million in debt. New pastor came in they started trying to reach the community and do stuff and they were reaching some community but the debt was keeping them kind of Strapped down, somebody in the community heard what they were doing, paid the whole thing off. Don't know who it is today. If you want a reward now, tell everybody. You want a reward in heaven, don't let nobody and don't even let your left hand know what you're doing. And God will bless you for it. Second, you should spend time daily talking to God so that you may have an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You should spend time talking to God daily so that you may have what? An intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 8. We've already <laughs> we've dissected the Lord's Prayer. If you didn't get that, you can go watch the other videos but we've dissected that pretty well. Let's just look at verses 5 through 8. He says, Whenever or when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room, Shut your door and pray to your Father who is what? In secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need. Praise God. Your Father knows the things you need before you ask him. So let me just say this before I die. The reason we need to pray is about the intimate relationship. It's about spending time with him. Not getting what we need. Because God already knows what we need before we even ask him. But he wants us to ask. You, you, you have not because what? You ask not. And so... He talks about prayer here. Now he says, he talks about, hey, don't be standing on the street corners. You need to understand, a norm, the normal posture for prayer for the Jew was standing. What do they do at the Wailing Wall, most of them in Jerusalem? They're standing there, and they're praying. So it's not about the posture, okay? And there's nothing wrong with praying in public, okay? It's why they were doing it. The Jews had three times set aside during a day that they prayed. Uh, it's just the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders would 
pray out loud or like, hey, Lord, man, I fast and I pray and I've been given, Lord, and Lord, I'm just so grateful that I'm better than that dog Gentile that has just walked up. You know, they were praying to be heard and be seen. Now, did Jesus and his disciples, were they involved in any of the prayers at times uh, with the Jews? Yes, I, I believe they would go at many times to the prayers in the temple, the prayers in the synagogue, but they didn't go for show. They went to pray to the Father. But it says what? When you pray, right? didn't say if you pray. When you pray. Now, the you there... In the Greek, is second person, which you should, well, y'all know pronouns. Our kids don't know pronouns probably, but uh, you there is second person singular, which means each individual, you're to pray. This is not plural, like you all pray. It's like when you pray individually, You need to go into your prayer room. You need to go to your prayer closet. Now, the, this word here, room, uh, the Greek word here, it was used back then uh, to refer to a storeroom where treasures might be kept. might be a closet where you had all your treasures, your nicest things would be kept in this storeroom. And you need to understand when you have a place, wherever it is, and you meet with God and you talk with God, that's a special place. Because you're going <coughs> to receive treasures from God. What are those treasures? Man, you get to meet with God, you get to hear from God, you get to talk to God, you get to listen to God. And see, those treasures are waiting us if we will go in secret and spend some time. He wants to speak to us. But if we're not careful, we'll be like the Gentiles and we just rattle off the same prayers every single day. I don't know who said it, but some pastor, some teacher said, most Christians, if they would get rid of one prayer, their prayer life would be a whole lot better. Because sometimes if we're not careful, we got this one prayer that we run to and we just say the same thing over and over. And we don't even remember what we're saying. And God says that's, uh, that's just meaningless. God's, God doesn't want any gimmicks. There's no magic pill. There's no magic formula, which we all wish we could go, buy a book, buy a course, buy a video series, and all of a sudden we watch this thing and our prayer life would be perfect and we'd have everything. It's just about talking with the Father and listening with the Father, having a place where you meet with God. You know, you got a Bible, and you meet and pray. Maybe you have a prayer app that you use. Uh, I'm back using a prayer app because I can put it all in there, plus I get stuff from mission organizations I can pray. So what, whatever you use, whether you use a journal, doesn't matter. But are you going to spend some time talking with the Father, praying with the Father, hearing from the Father, but then praying for others? See, sometimes we, we treat God like an, a cosmic Santa Claus. God, man, I got my list here. And you're like, hey, I'm even praying for some others, but you're really only interested in your list. But we sometimes forget, man, we got an awesome privilege as Christ followers. Why? Because the blood has been applied to us. And when God looks down on us, he doesn't see us in our sins anymore. He sends us, sees us cleansed in the righteousness of God. And because of that, if, if we're clean and confess to God, we have access to God and we have access to Almighty God, Eternal Father. You got problems? I got problems. You got needs? I got needs. You got stress? I got stress. 
Who can you run to? The Father. Go in secret. Spend time with the Father. Don't miss that word I put in there. Very key word. An intimate relationship. Which means it's a close and growing relationship. Because you spend time intimately with the Father, talking with the Father, and I'll put this phrase in, trying to listen to the Father. We're very good at talking to the Father sometimes, and sometimes we're not even good at talking to the Father. See, prayer's not about performance. You say, why did he so go behind closed doors? I think because then only God knows what you're saying. (laughs) And you're not trying to impress anybody else. But he says, man, and your father who sees in secret will what? He'll reward you. And what's that reward mean times? It's answered prayer. It's maybe a word from God that you need that day. You know, he just says, all right, you need this. Because I already know what you're going to face. And so, understand, we need prayer. We need giving. But he he goes to this next one. Number three, this is the third secret discipline he talks about, is you give up food, water, drink, or something else. For what? Sole purpose that you can spend more time with the Lord Jesus Christ. You give up food water, drink, something else so that you can spend more time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now 9 through 13 is the Lord's Prayer. Verse 14 and 15, he says, I let me remind you, uh, you need to forgive one another. If you don't forgive one another, I will not forgive you your trespasses. And then in 16, he still, you're going to see here, same symmetry going on he says what whenever you fast or when you fast not if you fast he says don't be gloomy like the hypocrites so he's been talking about them for they disfigure their faces so that their fasting is obvious to people what does he say truly i tell you they have their reward but when you fast. Put oil on your head and wash your face. So what? Purpose is so that your fasting isn't obvious to others, but to who? Your father who sees in secret. And here comes this phrase the third time. This is not by happenstance. He says this three times. And your father who sees in what? Secret will reward you. And so I really do think these are three, yes, secret spiritual disciplines, but I really think very key spiritual disciplines, if you're going to live the Christ-like life, if you're going to live the life of disciple and impact the kingdom, you're going to live out these. Now, what were the Jews doing? They were playing the part. They were just dressing up. Sometimes I think they were fasting. Now, the Pharisees would fast two days a week. They would fast Monday and Thursday. And many times they let people know they were fasting. Why would they do that? Well, I'm more spiritual than you. I'm fasting today. (laughs) You know. Now, did the Jews fast? They did fast around some of the festivals. Uh, The Torah talks about on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Day the blood was applied. All the Jews fasted. They were required to fast. Was there other fasting in the Bible? Yeah, remember Daniel? He fasted and prayed. How did Jesus start off his ministry? Forty days? Fasting? Now what is fasting? Just fasting. Four words, I think, abstaining for spiritual reasons. 
And I'll talk about some different ways of, of fasting, but just basically abstaining for spiritual reasons. That's a simple definition. But to do that, you've got to have self-control. You've got to have self-denial. You've got to have self-discipline. Say, so why does he deal with food? What is one thing we like to do? Eat. What is one of our basic uh, human needs? Is a human appetite, right? And it takes self-control from the Spirit to give up something <laughs> like that to spend time with Jesus. Now, basically what he's telling them, folks, like I said, the, the Pharisees, the, some of those people, the religious leaders, they would, you know, they weren't, they were making themselves look, oh man, we're having to look this way and we're not taking a bath. What Jesus is saying, hey, just go about your normal day. Wash your hair, take a shower, shave, whatever. Don't put on any pretense. Just go about life like normal. To where if someone walks up, that hey, there's, they don't know whether you've been fasting for seven days or seven minutes. You know what I'm saying? That's what Jesus is saying. Now, how can we fast? Well, there's all kinds of ways you, you could fast. Uh, actually, we, you kind of fast a little bit every day. You just don't realize it. That's why it's called breakfast, break, fast, because you hadn't been eating overnight. But there's several ways you can do it. You could eat w one meal a day. There's what some people call intermittent fasting. You may give up uh, breakfast, or you may not eat supper, whatever it is. If you remember, what did Daniel do? He basically ate fruit and vegetables for that time. So a Daniel fast would be that. Or you may decide to give up a certain food. You might decide to give up coffee, but let other family members know for that one. Might be irritable. You might decide to have uh, a fast of technology or social media. I'm not going to be on there for a day or two or a week. I'm not going to be on for a week. Or I'm not going to use any technology for this amount of time. Or, or I'm going to give up. I'm not going to eat during the daylight. I'll just eat supper. Whatever it is. The whole purpose is that you abstain from something for what? So that you might spend time with Jesus. That's the whole deal. The whole deal saying, Lord, I love you enough that I'm willing to give up this so I can spend a few more minutes with you. I'm going to give up this so I can spend 10 more minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you fill in the blank. That's between you and God. But it's a matter, you're like, well, I'm on medicine. I understand that. But you might give up certain food. You can still do fruit and vegetables, or you might say, hey, I'm, I'm meddling here now. I'm not going to eat any dessert for the week. Whatever it is. It's where you say, all right, Lord, I want to do this. I'm going to stay for this so that I might spend time with you. That's the whole purpose. And what did it say? And your father, who's in secret, will reward you. Now, this is not a popular discipline, and most Baptists don't want me ever mention this. But smack dab right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And everything Jesus is, is nailing here is about, all right, I'm teaching this, but it's about motive. I want you to know the right motive and why you need to do it so that you might grow closer to the Father. And so let me give you some application, just the four thoughts from this. Number one, you should not try to impress people with an improper motives. It's not about trying to impress people. If you cave into man, you forfeit the praise and, and honor that you'll get from God. See, sometimes the problem is just us. We want to please self. 
as D. Martin Lloyd-Jones said, it's just about pleasing us. And that's part of the problem is, is we're not good self-leaders. To be a self-leader means you've got to be disciplined in these areas. Which means I'm not going to care about what people think, and I'm not going to try to impress people with improper motives. Number two, I'm just going to hit this because I already hit, God sees everything that we do anyway. I mean, that's the whole thing. I think well, this is one of the main things he's saying. I see everything you do in secret. So if you want to have the right motives, go in secret and do these disciplines. If you want it to be, you know, if not, I'm going to see. That's why the Proverbs says, for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. He sees everything. Number three, choose between the applause of man or the applause of God. You've got to choose. Do I want the applause of man or the applause of God? See, many times we give in to the fear of man. We got what I, I don't remember if I saw this from a commentator or whatever, but we have a lot of religious Pharisees, seeism going on today. You have people serving in churches all over the place. You have people, well, some of that's maybe changed since the pandemic. Nobody wants to serve much. But, but I still think you have people that serve in churches because they just want to be known and seen and applauded by men. They're not serving because they want to honor God. And then last ties in with that. Christ followers are to live for an audience of one. You just have one audience. God. In that text, you see that phrase every time. Your father who sees in secret. Father who sees in secret. We're to live for our father. Giving will draw you closer to the father. Praying will draw you closer to the father. Fasting will will draw you closer to the Father. And they're all disciplines that we're to be about. If we want to produce Christ-like character, which we've been tying in with the fruit of the Spirit, I mean, these three disciplines are needed for God to work in your life so that you can produce that Christ-like character. If you don't have giving, praying, and fasting any, you will not be growing to where you need to be. And if you're not growing where you need to be, you will not be developing, the Holy Spirit will not be producing Christ-like character. in you. And that's what Christ wants for us all. So let me encourage you. Are any of us perfect in this? Nope. We're all in the same boat, so don't think anybody's better than anybody else. You might say, well, that person, they can really pray. Well, maybe they've known the Lord a lot longer than you have. You know what I'm saying? But it's about being intentional and say, hey, I want to have an intimate relationship with the Father. How's that come? Being obedient in these areas. And so... Let's move to prayer requests, and uh, we'll give you these prayer requests, and then we'll dive off into prayer. If you've got some for your group, let them know. If you're online and you want us to pray about something, please uh, email us or put something on the Facebook page, and we'll be glad to pray for you. Again, pray for an end of this war in Ukraine, and uh, God would move and work in those leaders' lives. Second, pray for uh, Dan and Laurie Upchurch. Uh, missionaries as they ministered all the refugees on the Poland border and helped church planners and churches. Like I said, a lot of them have had to flee their hometown. And they're trying to get to the border, but where they all are, we don't know. So pray for them. Number three, pray for Easter services all over the world. We're going to celebrate the resurrection and the blood he shed. And let's just pray for people to be saved. Uh, then pray for the search committee uh, as they're working and 
and uh, looking for the man of God for the associate pastor, children, and students. So pray for that. Do you want to praise the Lord for 90 plus dozen cookies that were delivered Monday and Tuesday? Uh, and pray, um, had good res- heard, I had good response, but I heard some other good testimonies of others that went out. Uh, but pray that the random act of kindness will cause many to think about salvation and coming to church on Sunday. If they come to us, Bethsaida, praise the Lord. If they go to another church that will preach the gospel, praise the Lord. Will we know it? Doesn't matter, but our Father in heaven does. You know what I'm saying? And so, just pray. Never know. Um, cause just to give you an example, most places, that, and those that went and delivered to you probably can say the same testimony. You walk in with a box. Or boxes. And they're thinking, oh great, what's this guy selling me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can see the... Uh, and then when I share with them, you can see the their whole demeanor change before your face within seconds. You can see a smile come on and hear a thank you or like, wow, never had anybody do that for me. Or thank you for thinking of us. So whether you delivered them, made cookies, boxed them, prayed for them, God, you were able to touch probably 60 plus schools, businesses, and restaurants. We even hit some fire departments, EMS. So you cover people all over this county from all walks of life, and you don't know how that one cookie might be the thing to get them to think about Christ. So pray for that. Then pray for revival uh, here and all around the world. And then pray for uh, the Southern Baptist Convention um, will meet these dates in Anaheim. But pray for the convention to start to take steps back to conservative beliefs. Okay? Um, and there's a couple of really strong conservative men of God that are going to be running. And um, so I'm going to be going. Me and Janice are going to go um, to um, just represent you and try to, re- hey, be a voice and say, we want to go back that way. We don't want to go that way. We want to go back to the word, back to the gospel, back to the sufficient word of God. So pray for it. This is it's a really critical time, and I wasn't going to go just due to cost, and I didn't even think they'd let us in California. But <laughs> they need tax money, so they waived all the mandates as of April 1. So we can come in as Southern Baptists uh, and infect the area uh, with the gospel. Okay, and so just pray for that. Okay, all righty. We're going to let you go online and in the house, you online, you pray. Hope you'll join us Sunday as we look at the gentleness factor. So uh, be looking at that and so hope you'll join us in the house. Let's pray.